Japanese trail, Rui Euro trail. I think this is a three eighths. These are a bit worn. These were a bit worn down, but this was a half inch, and this was a three eighths. Uh, never throw. Okay, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about tools today. Uh, the basic tools you need for installing a tile job, be it a floor tile or a wall tile uh, in a shower or whatever. Most of these tools that I have laid out here, um, pretty much you're gonna need most of those every day. Uh, there are you know, several versions of tools, but every job you're gonna need a certain set of tools to be able to finish it. Now these aren't all the tools I have, but um, these are pretty much most of the tools I'll use every day on, on every job. And then I have a variety of other tools, obviously, that are not specifically for tile, but, you know, for tile work. But you can use them for, uh, you know, for, for getting your job done. These are specifically, these ones here, are specifically needed for a tile job. So let's go through a few of them uh, so you can see what you need. I'll, I'll try and put a list in the description of the tools and some links to some of the some of the uh, some of the tools, and hopefully this will help you uh, when you need uh, when you're doing a tile job that you can find. You know you're going to have the tiles, the tools you you need ready and at hand for when you're doing the job. Okay, so the, I've got a bunch of tools here. The ones that are specifically related to tile work are the trowels. Now, trowel, they come in all different sizes. They come in V-notch, they come in Euro trowels, they come in, in uh, square notch. They, there's all different kinds of, uh, of trowels that you're going to need to install your tile. You need to get the one that's specific to the size of tile you're using. So, if you've got a large format tile, you're probably going to need a half inch by half inch square notch trowel or a quarter by half inch deep by quarter notch trowel that's like a deep notch so you get a lot of thin set under the tile and a, 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 a trowel is a gauge it gauges out the thin set you're going to need under the tile so you don't, when you're using it you're going to make sure that you scrape the floor that you're using to leave the exact gauge of, of thin set so, We got trowels, different kinds of trowels. Then you got margin trowels, all different kinds of margin margin trowels. Like you can get a margin trowel with teeth in it. For uh, this will be specifically for you know when you need it in tight places to get some some thin set. Uh, just a regular margin trowel. You can get big margin trowels, all different sizes of margin trowels. So these are for spreading your thin set and gauging it out. Then you need to cut um, your tile. So to cut your tile, you can use a snap cutter. I have one, one here. This, this is actually a ruby snap cutter. And I've got plenty of, of videos showing how, how to use a snap cutter. I'll link to those. You can apply good pressure. With the snap cutters, with the snap cutters, the better the quality, the easier it's going to work. If you get a cheap snap cutter, you're going to be really disappointed. So if you're a professional, obviously you know the tools you're going to need, but uh, a good snap cutter is is well worth the money. If you're a DIYer, maybe you can maybe you can rent one, or maybe you want to invest in one so you know you got it for you know for future use. In general. A good snap cutter, a professional grade snap cutter is going to work much better than a cheap one that you can get at a box store. You can use a grinder with a diamond wheel to cut your tile. You can get mesh blades. You can get other types of blades to cut through porcelain, marble, whatever. Uh, you just want to make sure when you get a blade that you're getting for your grinder, make sure you're getting the right one. The mesh blades generally are not good for curve cuts and always, always, always leave your guard on the grinder. You don't want a blade to explode and hit you in the face. So, grinder is a great tool for all kinds of cuts. Be 
but through straight cuts, mainly you're going to need a snap cutter or a wet saw. A wet saw, uh, I have several of them. But I'm just going to talk about the tools you need. So, for setting your time, you're going to need a trowel, you're going to need margin trowel, and then putty knives, a variety of putty knives come in handy. Speed squares, big and small. Spaces, spaces come in all different flavors. This is just a, these ones you hear, uh, eight inch spaces. You also need levels. So you've got a four foot level here, two foot level, a little torpedo level, and you get a six foot level. And these also work good as straight edges. So you're probably going to need a, a straight edge as well. A uh, straight edge can be either a magnesium straight edge, I've got a 10 footer and a 6 footer. Six footer, or you can use a, like I said, a level. Or you can use, if you've got a pe straight piece of lumber, you can use a, a piece of lumber which is perfectly straight. Just, just side it, make sure it's straight. Also for cutting tools, nips. There's different kinds of nips. These are all pair of, of nips that I've had for a very long time. And you get these other kinds of nips with the, the rounded blades on here. Utility knife. And I'll, you know, I'll link to some, um, some other videos too where I show how to use some. You know, a screwdriver obviously. If you don't want to keep a bunch of screwdrivers, just get one of these four-on-one screwdrivers that has different sizes all in one screwdriver. So you can get these, uh, a caulking gun, and also a rubbing stone. Rubbing stone is when you cut a tile, you're going to have a really sharp edge. You want to make sure you knock down that edge if it's going to be exposed. So rubbing stone, and of course you need a tape measure. Tape measure, you can get a, uh, you know, one of those foldable rules too works well, but a tape measure, you know, 25 foot. Uh, tape measure is a great idea. Uh, I think I said the caulking gun. And also, you're probably going to need an extension cord of some kind. The quality of the tool matters. If you get a cheap screwdriver or a cheap trowel or whatever you get, right, if you're going to be using it every day, they won't last very long. Like this margin trowel here. I've had this probably for 10 years. These trowels, they're pretty old too. In fact, these ones I don't use anymore. Uh, but, you know, quality tools matter. Then, hole saws. You can cut a hole in a, in a tile with a grinder if you have to. And I used to do that. But, to make your life easier, you can get hole saws in all different varieties. This one here is, I think it's four and a half inch. This one is a three inch. And you can get them down to a quarter inch. You can get them all, all different sizes. The diamond coated hole saws. So you can also buy kits for, um, you know, of hole saws with different sizes in them. This is brand new. I haven't used this one yet, but you know, it has different sizes. And this one actually has, you know, water sprayer, so you can have, you know, you can keep water on it, and it has a guide, you know, so you can, you know, get your hole precisely where you want it. So, you know, kits for work, you can get them all different prices and all different levels. Generally, the more expensive ones, you get much better performance and uh, a longer, a longer life. The cheaper ones. You get a, a limited amount of use. These are these are cheap, cheap ones that I got on Amazon, and you know they, they do the job, but you're only going to have uh, a limited number of of uses with them. So, and you can get all different kinds of kits of these too. Uh, another important thing is when you're grouting, make sure you wear gloves. This set is very caustic. I mean. Uh, Grout is very caustic. 
and it'll dry out your hands. So you make sure you wear, I always wear gloves. I see some guys that don't don't wear gloves when they're grouting. Uh, it's a big mistake. Uh, so these are the basic hand tools that you got. Oh, and I forgot. You need something to mix your your modeling. So you can get a mixing paddle, your drill. So this is this will, this would go on a half inch drill, like like this one here. So that's that's one way of doing it. Or you can get one specifically made for thin set. This is a ruby. Uh, this is a great great mixer. gonna mix small batches you can get a small one that you can put on a cordless drill or a small size drill the, the thing is the bigger the bucket uh, the more powerful drill you're gonna need so you can get three and a half gallon buckets you can get ruby buckets they make them all different sizes you can get five and a half gallon buckets five gallon buckets you can even get six gallon buckets and generally if you're gonna mix a whole bag of thinset you're gonna need a five gallon bucket if you're gonna mix partial small buckets will work you still need something to mix it with. You can mix it with a margin trail, uh, maybe one with a little bit longer, I think I got one over here. One with a little bit longer paddle on it. This actually worn down, this used to be about this long. And so there's a ton of tools you're gonna need. You might not need all these at once, but you're gonna need them at some point during your your job. It's, the more complicated it is, the the more tools you're gonna need. Uh, obviously, floats they come in different different varieties. You got uh, you've also got systems that you can use for uh, for grouting. This kind of float I used to use, but now I use these softer rubber floats. They got very soft edges. These are a little bit harder. Uh, I prefer these. Uh, you know, but these these work pretty well too. There are different kinds, like if you're gonna get a, an epoxy float, it's stiffer. If you're gonna get uh, a float for, for stones, for very rounded, you're gonna get a softer float. So depending on what you're gonna, what your job is, you're gonna get, uh, you know, the right, right tool. If this one here will pretty much work with any tile that you get. Uh, so this kind of soft float. So basically, that's uh, these are the tools you're gonna have to have to uh, get a job done. There are many other more tools. I have a truckload of tools, and I got my 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 bag here is I got a tool bag here. Got a tool bag here. It's got a ton of other tools in it. Oh, here's one. Here's something else. A rubber mallet. So these are some other tools that you can get. Um, so, so there's all kinds of tools. The rubber mallet comes in handy when you've got to make a toilet cut, just an extension ring, work as a template. A whale tail you put on your bucket with a vacuum and, and it'll reduce the dust when you mix in. A hand brush. So, there's a lot of tools that you're going to need to do a job. As I said, some of them you're going to use all the time. Like, the trial you're going to be using all day long. The float you're going to only be using when you're, um, when you're grabbing. A cordless drill. You've got a cordless drill. I have this wall. This is actually one that I've retired. This one here is, is the older one. I have a newer one in the truck. This one's retired. Batteries weren't working as good anymore. So, all kinds of tools that you can use. Most people have some, already have some of these tools. Like most people will have a cordless drill, they'll have a hammer, they'll have, uh, you know, uh, a pie knife. Put 
put that away. So you may already have some of these tools in your in your garage. If you don't, then you're gonna have to get them. I would suggest you be prepared before you start your job, so you don't run to get to a point where you you need something and you don't have it. Another useful tool is like a straight edge. When you gotta connect lines, this is really old. This, this is probably like 40 years old. Still use it. And so the tools you need, the basic tools you need are, are, are these here, as I've said, said already. Um, then obviously you need a wet saw if you've got big, um, if you've got complicated cuts like an L-cut or a U-cut or whatever. You can do them with a grinder, but if they're gonna be visible, uh, probably a, a wet saw is a better idea. idea. And all blades are not made the same. Uh, you know, a, a marble cutting blade is going to have difficulty cutting through uh, porcelain. A porcelain blade it will cut through marble without a problem, but might not be as clean a cut. Uh, glass tiles uh, blades, uh, the you know much denser, smaller, smaller diamonds uh, with a softer matrix. So there's different in different blades are used for different things. And as I said, you can get. Uh, a mesh blade for your grinder, or you can get you know a more more substantial blade, which is multi-purpose for, for cutting tiles uh, with your grinder. And you can make a lot of cuts with a grinder. So anyway, uh, this is what uh, I figure is the basic tools you're gonna need. Okay, so this is a. Snap cutter. I have different kinds of these. I actually have a bunch of these. Four foot level. Two foot level. Torpedo level. Straight edge spaces. All saws. Screwdriver, utility knife, nips, nips, hammer, fixing paddle, rubbing stone, variety of margin shells, half inch shell, rule euro shell. I think this is a three eighths. These are a bit worn. These were a bit worn down, but this was a half inch, and this was a three eighths. Uh, never throw them away because once it wears down, it's a different size trowel foil. A uh, whale tail, toilet extension, caulking gun, rubber mallet, gloves, brush, speed levels, spaces, and a mesh blade for the grinder. This is a different one on here. So, yeah, so basically. These are, uh, are the tools you're going to need. Obviously, uh, depending on the job you got, you might need more or different tools. A bucket, mixers. Okay, so I hope you found this useful. Uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and always remember to, to click the uh, notification bell right next to the YouTube subscribe button. Uh, leave your comments in the comment section below. Check out my online store at dibsmart.com. A lot of these tools are on there. Not all, but we're adding more all the time. And also check out my Patreon account. Um, if you can support me there, that'd be great. Yeah, I love to make these videos, but it takes time and effort. So a little support would be really appreciated. Thanks a lot.